to get your families to support you. I think this is a major topic for a lot of people. Um, they're often concerned. You know, we all have families and family members, and and we're close to them, and and we want to share. A lot of times, you want to share this um, journey with them. But uh, a lot of roadblocks. One of the major roadblocks that my patients run into is how do they get their families on board if their family's not all on board? So uh, this is my answer to that. Well, it depends. I know, brilliant answer, right? <laughs> It just depends. So here's what it depends on. First, you got to, to ask yourself. You know, I, I teach my patients to be very specific with the words, and and that means they're thinking about the problem. You know, so if you're specific about your words, the next the the next word you got to ask is, well, what do you mean by family? Makes sense, right? Are you talking about close family, or are you talking about just distant family? You know, because if you're worried about your second cousin. Or what your you know uh, great grandmama might think, then uh, that's too distant to matter. Or or just people at family reunions or people that you only see um, a couple of times a year. You know their opinion doesn't matter. They're going to hear it through the grapevine anyway. So if it's just distant family, I'd uh, I'd tell you pay them no mind. You know they don't really know. They're going to gossip. They're going to say what they're going to say. They don't really know you well enough to to give a good judgment. So that's the first thing is to determine what you mean by family. So I'm going to assume that we all mean the close family. So what's close family? It's your first um, core nugget is what I would say. Mom, dad, husband, and kids, one generation. Maybe sisters and brothers if you're close to them, but if you're not, I wouldn't even include them. Um, so really close family members that you talk to a lot of the time or spend a lot of time with. Um, so what do you do if they're not supportive? So let's say, what, what do you do if your husband's not getting on board with your healthier eating? Or maybe your mother doesn't think that you need another weight loss surgery or revisional weight loss surgery. What do you, what do, you do with that? So uh, the answer to that is, well, it de again, it depends. And what does it depend on? Well, it depends on what role do you play in that family. See, you got to think about that. What role do I play in the family? So uh, one is it a distant family or close family? We're assuming we're talking about close family. Two, in that close family, what role do you play? All right, so um, if you've always been the decision maker of that family, it's easy. You just decide. You just tell the family. They get on board. If you've always been the cook for that family, you just cook. And if they don't eat, they go hungry. That's it, you know. And when it's your kids... If they don't drive, if they don't cook, they're going to eat what you, what you make for them. They have no choice. I mean, when I was a little kid, my dad wanted to make chicken uh, feet one night, and I had to eat chicken feet. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It was just, you know, the, they'll, they'll have to eat what, they, what, um, what you make for them. And if it's your husband, and if he wants to say, well, uh, you can cook whatever you want. I'm just going to go get whatever I want, and he wants to go for burgers and fries. He'll do that for a few nights, but eventually he'll realize, no. She really means it this time. So as long as you stick to your guns, you're good. You know, so if you're the decision maker, if you're the power player in your, in your family, it's very simple. They do or, you know, or they go hungry. It's not that hard of an option. But what if you're not the decision maker? What if you're not the boss of the family? You know, maybe, maybe you've always been more passive. Your husband or your wife has been the one that always does the cooking. Or you seem to give in to if the kids want pizza or spaghetti. You just make them whatever they want. Now that's a tougher question. Okay. And, and here's the answer to what to do about that. At some point in your life, you have to find your voice. That's the key. I bet you if you're the passive voice in your family... You've always been the passive person your whole life. You've always catered to other people. You've always put other people in front of their needs, in front of your needs. You've always just kind of tagged along whichever direction the wind blew, whatever the group was doing, whatever movie they wanted to see, you would go see. Where they wanted to go eat, you'd go eat. My guess is you've been that way your whole life. So at some point, you have to find your voice. And that's the key. And I think, why not weight loss surgery? This is a major decision. It's got major ramifications, not just for you, but your whole family, your whole life, whatever you want to do, right? So this is the time, if any time in your life, to stand up for yourself and what you want and what you're going to do. Dang, it better be weight loss surgery.
It's got to be weight loss surgery. If it's not weight loss surgery, you're going to be in trouble. Because if you continue with that passive voice, letting everyone, putting everyone else's needs in front of you, um, letting other people's opinion matter than your own opinion, after weight loss surgery, guess what? It'll still be the same. It'll still be hard. It'll still be a struggle. You'll still feel unsupported. You'll still be unhappy. You'll still be wondering why it didn't work. And you can't have that because there's too much risk with weight loss surgery and there's too much money. There's too, too many changes you've got to make. You know, a lot of my patients put, you know, um, they go through extremes to try to get surgery, you know. They put a lot of their life on hold just to have the surgery. So there's no time like weight loss surgery to find your voice. So if you're the passive person in your family, my only... Um, comment for this is that you have got to find your voice. You have to state what you want, your intentions, and why you're doing it. Which takes me to question number two, right? Who are you doing this for? Who are you doing this for? Who are you doing this weight loss journey for? Because if it's for them, if it's for your family, your husband, what your co-workers think, what your mama thinks, are you still seeking their approval? I promise you, you're going to struggle with your weight loss. You're going to struggle with your weight loss. Why? Because you will always be seeking the approval of someone else. And those people, at any moment, for any reason, at any whim, can decide to withhold that approval, which will lead to your unhappiness, which will make you start to, self, to second guess and doubt. See, you, you have to ask yourself that question, who am I doing this for? And that answer, the only answer, better be for yourself. It's for me. It's my time. I'm doing this for my health. Mama, you don't give me insulin shots. Honey, you don't ache in my knees or walk in my shoes and have my achy back. You know, I'm doing this for me. You know, that's the voice that you've got to have and speak with. Now, those are the two major questions. One question is, what do you mean by family? Is it close family? Um, and if it's a close family, then what role do you play? And if it's a passive role, you've got to find your voice. Question number two, who are you doing this for? And the answer's got to be yourself. So if you're doing it for yourself, then it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks or believes. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. You know that old saying about opinions? Opinions and buttholes, everyone has one, right? And that's nice, they can have one, but that doesn't mean you have to take it and lead your life according to that. Because... Um, Oh, which takes me to tips. How can you get them to be more supportive? First thing you got to do is tell them what you need by support. Now, you don't care if they give it to you, but just tell them what you need. Don't assume they know how to support you. You know, Aunt Polly, just because you know, she says, oh, you're, you're uh, having weight loss surgery, I'm going to bring you some cookies, and you think that she's being unsupportive, but that's Aunt Polly's way of being supportive. She only knows how to make you cookies. It, you know, it's not that she's being mean or trying to sabotage you. It's just you haven't told her how to be supportive. So first thing you got to do is like tell them how to support you. You know, this is how we're going to cook. This is how we're going to eat. This is how we're going to live and exercise. We're turning off the television. We're getting out all the junk in, in the uh, cupboards. We're only going out to eat once a week and only bad foods once a month or whatever. You just decide. You tell them how you need the support. I need, I need to read this book, you know, or whatever. You have to tell them what you need for support. Don't assume they know. Okay? But once you've done that, once you've done that and you've set the, the groundwork down for what they need to do, you're done. You don't wait around for their approval. You don't wait around for a vote. You know, no, this is your journey. You're going to eat what you're going to eat and what they, they're going to do whatever, whatever they're going to do, which takes me to the big idea of the night. Here's the big idea of the night. At the end of the day, we are all responsible for our own lives. That's it. We are all responsible for our own lives. See, everybody has an opinion, but no one is responsible for you except for you. Not your husband, not your mother, not your kids. We are all responsible for our own lives. Right? And I will tell you, if people would just start taking responsibility for our own lives, it would fix 99% of our problems. It would fix 99% of your problems. Life is what we make of it. Life is what we make of it. And we're responsible for that life. We've been given this one precious life. And we waste it trying to please other people who've got other agendas. 
who've got other things that they're trying to do and go for. You know, people would be astounded. We worry so much about what other people think of us. The real surprise is if we actually knew how little people actually think about us. They're too busy thinking about their own problems, right? So why are we so worried what other people think or what they're wanting or what they want to do? The reality is people spend very little time thinking about you. And that's just the truth, you know, because you know, we are responsible for our own lives. And the second you take responsibility, a lot of those problems will go away. And that's ultimately all you have to do is to tell your family that. Baby, we are all responsible for our own lives. Okay? All right, that's it. That's the end of my talk. It was a little bit of a rant. I hope you didn't mind it. Um, it's always a tough question for me to try to answer with, uh, for patients because, uh, you know, a lot of times they feel really hopeless and they really feel it. Like, Dr. Vong, I really need my family to get on board. And my answer is always, no, you don't. <laughs> and new patients go, man, he is such a jerk. Or people who watch me on Periscope say, man, what a jerk. But the answer is it's true. You don't need their support. You don't need their approval. You don't need anyone's approval. 